you know, Satan would like for you to believe, oh, well, prayer is just, it doesn't really amount to that much. I mean, it, you can pray, but doesn't really, really have the power behind it that they tell you it does. He wants you to believe that, but that That's is right. not true. That's right. When you're standing on prayer and you're standing on his words, it will come to pass. That's right. So... Let's be in prayer for this and, and let's bring it to pass and so that we can see those kids and they could get done what they need to get done. Um, I was thinking the other day about kind of along those lines uh, again this morning and um, I, I was reading a story about Charles Capps. Now, most of you know Charles Capps. He was a man that really stood on the word and he... Uh, he believed in confessions and meditating on the word and really getting into it. that was that was his story meditating on that word and so one day and this must have been when he was first getting started because he was he was meditating on the word and he was confessing the scriptures and um, he said lord i don't know whether any of you have ever been praying to the lord and talking to him and not really expecting him to answer you, and then he comes right back in and he talks to you. <laughs> so he was, he was praying, and he was talking to the Lord, and he said, Lord, you know, when, whenever I'm confessing these, I really, I, I, I just really feel like I'm lying. And the Lord spoke to him just that quick, and he said, what makes you think you're lying? He said, those are my words in those scriptures. Those are my words to you. Right. I created you, and I designed you, and I know what those words will do. That's right. Well, that's the only time I ever heard that story from Charles Capps. I couldn't hardly believe it reading at that time, but it, evidently it uh, made a difference in his life because prayer is very strong. It was designed for us as a channel from our hearts to the throne room of God. He designed those. He designed that as a way for us to talk to him, for us to get our needs to him. And he's listening. And he is responding. He says he, the words tells us that he watches over his word to perform it. He's watching over you. After all, Jesus died on the cross for you. That's how much he loves you. Meditate on that. He loved me so much. Do you know anybody else that would have died on that horrible cross if they didn't have to? Jesus came from heaven. He was safe up there. But he came to heaven. He came from heaven to die on a horrible, horrible cross. More pain than any individual has ever gone through on the face of this earth. To save you. To pay the cost. To take you out of Satan's dominion. And move you into his family. Into his family. Not as a servant. He didn't save you to be a servant. He didn't save you to just be a person out here doing what he wanted you to do. No. He brought you right into his home, right in as a new creation, a brand new creation. There had never been another one, another new creation. Jesus Christ was the first one. He said, this day have I begotten you. He's the head. He's the head of this family. We are the body. His words, his power flows through us because of Jesus Christ. It's like, it's like a pilot that uh, it, he's, he's having to use his, his, instru his instrument panel because uh, the visibility is zero. And he's having to use his instruments. He can't go by what he sees. He can't go by what he feels. He can't go by what he feels. He has to go by that instrument panel. He has to keep his eyes on that. 
If he gets his eyes off from that instrument panel that is telling him what to do and how to do it, he will crash the plane. And that's the way we are, people. He told Joshua, the Lord told Joshua, whenever he was getting ready to take over after Moses, he told Joshua, he said, uh, he was getting ready to replace him. Now, he, he had spent a lifetime with Moses. But he told him, he said, Joshua, you're going to have to meditate on these scriptures. You're going to have to get the word into you, the word of the law at that time. He said, you're going to have to get the word into you. You're going to have to meditate on it day and night. Don't let it get out of your eyes. Don't let it get away from your ears. And he said, therein, you will be successful. People, do you want to be successful? Do you want to climb over the mountains that Satan is throwing at you? Do you want to step over all of the, uh, the objects that Satan is putting out in front of you? And everyone in here can raise their hands and say, yes, I've, I've got those things. I've got those things in front of me. Well, the Lord told Joshua if he wanted to be successful, to meditate on those words. Keep them in front of his eyes. Don't look to the right. Don't look to the left. Don't look at all of the things that Satan is trying to take your eyes off from, off from the Lord. Keep your eyes on him and do exactly what his word tells you to do. Meditate on it. Praise the Lord. Praise him, because when you're praising the Lord, people listen to me. When you're praising the Lord, I don't care what's in front of you. When you're praising the Lord, if you're about to hit another car, if you're about to, you're, you're facing a death sentence for a family member, you're doing this or you're doing that, that nothing can bring you around, you praise the Lord. That's right. Because that brings him on the scene. He inhabits the praises of his people. And there is nothing on the face of this earth, nothing that Satan can throw at you that God can't wipe out of the way. Nothing. No power. No power that great. I'm going to ask you all to just stand. And I want to ask you to take these few minutes, these few seconds, and go to him right now. Every one of you. You take these few minutes and set it aside. I don't care who's on either side of you. Don't pay any attention to them. You meditate on the Lord. And you just talk to Him. And you praise Him. And if you've got a problem, you take it to Him right now. Because He's here. And He wants. He wants to take care of you. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Father God, in the name of my most precious and holy Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, we just want to glorify you with everything that's within us, Father God. Every cell that's within our bodies, we want it to cry out in praises to you. Oh, Father God, I pray for the Holy Spirit to just move. Move this morning in this, in this sanctuary, Father God. Touch each heart. Allow them to feel the Holy Spirit, the holy love of God moving in you. Father God, we give you praise. We give you praise. You take this service and you do with it what you want. Most welcome. Most welcome, Holy Triune Godhead in this place. You will always, always be the one that we look to and that we praise and that will be taking us through. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, how many of you this morning are thankful to know the Lord this morning? Yeah. How many of you thankful? Many, many, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, D.L. did a, he had a little demonstration over here, and I'll never forget it. He had a Wake's feed bag full of whole corn. And he was talking about, about overflowing, the, the word that says, press down, shake together, and overflowing. So he'd pour corn in the bucket, and then he'd, what would he, he'd press it down, and then he'd shake it. And he'd press it down. He did that time after time until it overflowed. There's a line in the song we're going to sing. Let your thankfulness overflow. Listen to me. Listen to me. Thankfulness is a choice. 
It's a choice. You can choose to be bitter or you can choose to be thankful. That's on you. And listen, whatever's overflowing out of you is spilling on to the people around you, the people you love. If it's bitterness, it's bitterness. If it's hurt, it's hurt. Listen, if it's peace, joy, love, the fruits of the Spirit, that's pouring out over the people around you. Listen to me. Whether we like it or not, and, and you speak up if you disagree, we're all a product of our environment. If you ever work with somebody, next thing you know, you're, you're talking like them, saying the silly things they say. Listen, you're a product. Listen, you can choose. You can choose. God even gives you the choice to choose between heaven and hell. That's on you. Think about that. Heaven and hell is in what you choose. So today, today, you can choose to be thankful. You can choose to be th thankful. See, you have authority through the Spirit of God in you over things of darkness. You need to take that authority and use it. You need to take that authority and the song goes like this. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Sing of His promises evermore. And pour out your thankfulness. Let it overflow. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so.
sing and there's no sound and there's no sound louder than a captive set free you're glad to be free oh there's no sound louder than a captive set free oh and there's no sound louder than a captive set free no there's no sound louder than a captive set free so let the redeemed of the lord say so and sing of his promises so to the redeemer amen amen, That's right. amen. Yeah. thank you father oh we bless your name god there's no one that is worthy of our praise no one that's more holy faithful and true no one is loving and as kind as you are father psalm 34 8 taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the one who takes refuge in him amen Thank you, Father. The song can't go back to the beginning and we can't control what tomorrow will bring. It's talking about living in the middle and we've all heard about the dash from between your birth date to the date that you pass on. It's that middle part that counts and it's so true. It, it matters every day. You're living in the middle. You're living in that dash and it matters what you say, who you talk to, where you go. The blessings and the promises of God flowing out of you into other people. Amen. Amen. Father, we trust that you are here this morning. We believe it. We know it. We love you, God. We love you, God. Can't go back to the beginning. Can't control what tomorrow may bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promise to be I'm not enough Unless you come, will you meet me here today? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here Bye. 
is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place.
the north, the south, the east, and the west. Will you me Wake up, dry bones. I won't settle. Wake up. Come alive. Come alive. Is you Come alive. Is all you are. Come alive. Will you need me Refreshing. Restore. Remake. Renew. Refresh. Remake. Restore. Renew. Will you meet me here again? Is all I want. Is all you are. Your word says that you never forsake us. That you will come. You are a help. You uphold us. You surround us with your love and forgiveness, Lord. You strengthen us when we are weak. You lead us when we are lost. Father, we thank you for your undergirding. We thank you that we can call upon you in time of trouble. And you fulfill us and guide us. Father, we just thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. I want to share a word from the message that I'm going to be bringing just in a moment. This is to encourage you. Today we're going to talk about how we break spiritual droughts in our life. It's not a matter of if you will or have ever had. We have spiritual droughts. We go through dry places. And dry places are places where we as believers, where we as Christians are vulnerable. And so I, I want to... When we, when we sing about these dry bones awaken and we understand that Scripture talks about the, the valley of dry bones and stuff like that, um, dry places are a place in the spiritual realm um, where the, the, the water of the gospel, the water of the washing of the word, the living water that's supposed to be springing up within us, those rivers of living water that are supposed to be flowing from us, are non-existent. It's places where, where demons and devils and evil spirits are comfortable. Now, I want to put one passage up, um, if, if we can do that during the middle of this, and we're going to come back and we'll sing this a, a, again. One of the things that you do, I'm, I'm starting today a, a series on spiritual warfare. And one of the most important things that you need to learn to begin with uh, about how you battle and how you wage spiritual warfare is that first of all, you have to have uh, uh, an army can't march very long and it can't fight very long if it don't have water. And that's why he says throughout Scripture, time after time, there's, there's references to the environment by which believers are made to live in is well watered. The pouring, the outer 
the, the pouring down of the rain, that latter rain, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Fear no, why? Hmm? Because He's with me. See, before you start that, He said, The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. Right? He, he, he takes us where? He takes us beside still waters. And what happens there? He restores. See, there's water is essential in the natural for life. A spiritual parallel to that is the water of the Spirit. The water of the Gospel is essential for spiritual life. And so when we understand these parallels in Scripture, and so here's what I know about spiritual drought. I've been in a, I've been in a few. It just seemed like when I prayed the heavens were brass. It seemed like God's a million miles away, but I know He didn't move. Hmm? So I want to I want to I want to draw your attention to this passage, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43. And then we're going to sing about Holy Spirit come. And if you're here today, we're praying for you to have a drought buster. Anybody need a drought buster? Anybody need a little rain just in your spirit and in your heart and just and God, I, maybe I'm not even in a drought. I'm just thirsty and I'd like a little more. I like what happens when your spirit starts raining down on me. I'm just going to pull one, one little piece of passage out right here and, and, and make a couple of comments and we're, gonna, we're just going to continue on with some worship. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, now we're talking about the context of this is talking about the unclean spirit. How, how many of all at one time in your life Right? You were not walking with God. You were on Team Satan. But you changed teams. You got a new jersey. And you put on a garment of praise for what? The spirit of heaviness. That's how you bust the drought. You, you learn how to praise when the drought's going on. You say, I don't feel like praising. Do it anyway. You bust the drought when you bust on through. And you worship God not because you feel like it. But because of who He is and because He is worthy whether you feel like it or not. Amen? It's a drought buster. It's how you pray through. It's how you get through. That's just one part of it. When, when an unclean spirit is going out of a man, what does he do? He walks through dry places. Everybody say dry places. Anybody here in a dry place? I've been through them. Dry places. And that spirit's looking to find what? Rest. Dry places are a place in the spirit realm. When I'm talking spirit principles, dry places are a place where evil spirits are comfortable. It's a snake pit. Huh? A fish lives in the water. There's a reason that the old fish symbol, right, was a... The, the symbol of the early Christian church, the environment, the habitat that it needs is, is to be well watered. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. How many all the branches can't go bear fruit if there's not even water coming up to it? That's right. He tells it to be rooted and grounded in love. There's a big oak tree right out here behind the church right here. That old oak tree's been here ever since I can remember, and I've been here a long time. It's seen every winter that winter can bring. It's seen every wind. A few years ago, a tornado blew through here, and some of the leaves were gone, some of the branches were broken, but because it had deep root, because it was well watered, the environment around you can be dry, but if you can get down to the well. Let's have a drought buster this morning. Awaken dry bones. You, now listen to me. You and I have our part that we must do in this. And that's pressed beyond the flesh. That's right. Lord God, I need to hear your word today. I need to be challenged by your truth and take responsibility for what I am responsible for. I know in these dry places that there is a roaring lion going about seeking those whom he may devour. He's hunting. He's looking for. He's trying to find rest. He's walking through these dry places. And when I am dry spiritually, I've neglected prayer, I've neglected my study, I've neglected praise, I'm going through a tough time, it's been an evil day, I'm having a hard time standing right now. Lord God, by your Spirit, you can water us. Thank you. So one key to a drought buster is strapping on the garment of praise. So I'm shedding, I'm shedding the grave clothes. Awaken dry bones. Thank you. Not for a minute did you forsake me, God. 
Not for a minute did you ever leave. You'll never leave. Lord God, we press on in today. How many willing to go now? You get you a drink today in the Spirit of the living God. And you walk out of here refreshed. Don't you come in. If you've been in a drought, don't you leave like you come in. And if you're doing well, how many of y'all know we need to sustain and maintain that drink again? Jesus told the woman at the well of Samaria, said, if you drink this natural water, you're going to thirst again. But if you drink the water that I have, you will never, everybody say never. Thank you, Lord God. Let's sing again, worship Him, put on the garment of praise, and we're moving on. The Lord's in this place. Don't miss it. This is a place. This is the time. Not for a minute, Lord God. Was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute was I forsaken.
There's a table that you've prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and your blood you shed for me This is how I fight my battles And I song of praise for what you've done. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. In the valley, I know that you're with me. And surely your goodness your mercy follow me and my weapons I praise and thanks to you this is how I fight my battles and I believe you've overcome and I will lift my song of praise for what you've done this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It's how I fight. We fight. We fight, Lord. We praise you, Lord. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Christ defeated the enemy yeah. and you know it wasn't a last second field goal and it wasn't a jump shot at the buzzer he crushed him he crushed him and listen this is how much authority he has over the enemy the word says he prepares a table yeah. now listen if I'm in a bunch of my enemies I'm probably maybe going to take cover and look where I can make a shot or do something but he calmly walks out and he starts preparing a table in the presence of your enemies listen he that's in the he that's he that is god is in you the word says greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world the spirit of god's inside of you listen the spirit of god that's inside of you has crushed the opposition he's crushed it 
It's not a last second jumper. It's not a Hail Mary. He crushed him. And the authority you have over him is the authority you have over him. The Word of God says this. When the day of evil comes, it says put on the full armor of God. And then what do you do? You stand, you resist, and you fight. And one of the articles is a belt of truth. And one of the lies the enemy tells somebody or somebody's is that you go through the fight alone. And that's a lie. See, here's what the word says. You, you back me up. One put a thousand to flight and two put how many? Ten thousand. The word says two is better than one. The word of God talks about the prayer of agreement where two or more. We say in Jesus name we stand over this. And there's a line in this, one of the songs we sang says there's a hallelujah with the victory. And I think back, we get these text messages from Jeff and Bree. The test came back, no sign of disease. Hallelujah. That's a victory. That's a victory. No weapon formed against you will, will prosper. Listen, one can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. You don't have to go through the fight alone. What keeps you from what, what keeps you from accepting help? I don't do well. People offer to help me sometimes, and I usually shove them to the side. Nah, I'll handle that. What is that? That's pride. And usually it doesn't go very well after that. Why? The Word of God says what goes before pride? What, what, what goes after pride? Destruction. What keeps you from accepting help? What keeps you from asking for help? It's pride. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Let go of pride and get a hold of freedom. Yes. Amen. Let go of pride and get a hold of peace. Yeah. Let go of pride and get a hold of love. There's somebody that's going through probably the same thing you are. Not only that, they want to help. I can't imagine. I can't imagine as adults... My girls needing me. And not something I have. Not a $20 bill or a car or whatever. Needing me in a situation. And not asking. Breaks my heart. Think about that. All I need you to be there, Dad. I just need you to be there. You don't need to say anything. You don't need to. We just need you there. I'd never brush them to the side. I would spend what I have and borrow what I don't to get there. And yet I'm just a man. How much more does your heavenly father love you? Are you in the fight today? I believe the word of God. I believe the, the, the God has one word for you. Don't quit. And listen, swallow your pride and ask for help. Because there's somebody who wants to help. There's somebody who wants to fight. There's somebody who wants to help you up and dust you off and say, now let's go at it together strength in numbers church and listen to me you got to realize something in spiritual warfare that the opposition is always going to attack the truth he's going to attack the truth so you have to know what the truth is and then the word of god says it'll set you what free. free hallelujah lord we thank you for this day god we thank you lord jesus we don't have to go through life alone lord we don't have to go through the fight alone father god we don't have to go through hard times and situations lord lord the, lord when the word said lord we need to open our eyes to see your majesty where we can help our brothers and sisters and not be so consumed with the things that are going on in the mirror with us lord to be able to see past ourselves into how can I help that person. Lord, I tell our little girls all the time, you're going to have to realize that the world doesn't revolve around you. God, this you put, we, I believe God's going to put you in a place to help somebody this week. And it may, it may be no more than a word. It may be no more than an action. Hey, can I help you with something? Can I pick this up that you dropped? Lord, help us be difference makers today difference makers this week lord lord we rebuke the lies of the opposition lord we rebuke him lord we kick him out the door lord we take the authority we have based on what your word says lord and we crush him we crush him under our foot lord if i've got a copperhead under my foot his head's under my foot he's worthless to anything lord and we crush him lord we thank you lord jesus that it wasn't a narrow margin of victory when you defeated satan lord lord it wasn't a hail mary 
It wasn't a three-quarter shot, three-quarter court shot that just happened to go in. It was a crushing defeat. Ushers, as you come, Lord, I pray that these dollars and cents, Lord, will go to lift up your kingdom, to let your people know that there's freedom in Jesus Christ, Lord. There's help in Jesus Christ. There's strength, Father God. Lord, help us to realize what your word says, that one put a thousand to flight, two put ten thousand. Lord, help us to put them to flight, Lord. Help them to put them to flight, Lord. Lord, we love you this morning, Lord. We thank you for who you are, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that death doesn't reign in us anymore, Lord. Your word says, Lord, that you that you took the keys of death. Lord. You, you took those keys. Those are yours, Lord. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope to me your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began ash was redeemed only beauty remained my orphan heart was given a name my morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began
join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever and amen. When death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began. Reach over, give your neighbor a big high five, little love tap. Tell them good to see you. Glad you're upright and breathing. It's good to be alive in the house of God today. Anybody say amen? I am uh, feeling refreshed and watered and ready for more. Anybody say amen to that one? Yeah. So, before I dismiss the kids... Uh, we are wanting to, uh, Megan, where you at, sis? Megan, 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 right there. Come up here, hon. Everybody say, we love you, Megan. Uh, we'd love for you to stay, but we're going to say, not goodbye, but see you later. Megan is uh, making a move in her life. She's moving to Florida. And uh, so I told her, I said, well, you know, you'll find you a church family down there. Maybe you already have, but you can always watch live or internet, all that whole thing right here. We want to put our hands up this way and pray God's blessing on her. She starts a new spot in her life. Father God, we thank you. We're not saying goodbye, Lord God. We're saying we'll see you later. Either here, there, or in the air, Lord God. That's where we'll see Megan. She'll be back and come visit, Lord God. Or we'll be down there and say hi to her. Or one day we all go to heaven. We'll be in that same spot, Lord God. We thank you for her time with us. We thank you for the blessing that she has been, the growth that we have seen in her. We thank you, Lord God, for her love and her kindness to this congregation and to this church, sharing her testimony and those things, Lord God, that she's done that blessed. We thank you for her. Father God, would you cover her, be strong for her, lead her and guide her, protect her and watch over her as she begins this new place, this new phase in her life. In Jesus' name, everybody agreed. Said, amen. 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 We love you. All right. All right.